I figured it was time to have a go at building my own lithium ion flight packs. So a while ago I bought a whole bunch of these uh, Samsung INR 21730T cells. So this is the first pack that I built yesterday. Just a simple 4S 1P pack using 3D printed end caps and spacer in the center. Using a spot welder to connect the, uh, the cells in series. So this is 0.2 millimeter thick uh, pure nickel strip uh, spot welded with the secure SQSW1 spot welder and with the, um, the balance wire soldered into the middle there. Now you'll notice that I have cut slots into the nickel strip at the ends and that's just to encourage the electricity from the electrodes of the spot welder to actually travel down into the metal of the cap of the cell rather than just traveling through the, uh, the nickel strip itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut a bunch of 32 millimeter long pieces of this 0.2 millimeter pure nickel strip and then use the Dremel to cut some uh, slots into the end. So the discharge wires will be connected to the first and the last cell, the positive of this one and the negative of that one, and the order that the cells will be connected will be along there, along there, and then along there. Now I'm going to hot glue these together just along the, the sides. I'm not sure if I'll keep the hot glue for the actual final packs, but it helps just to hold them together as I'm doing the spot welding. Okay, starting on the bottom of the pack, we're going to have the negative of the first cell connected to the positive of the second cell, and then the negative of the third cell connected to the positive of the fourth cell. So one strip across there and one across there. Okay, weld number one. Now, the strength of the positive weld is actually slightly stronger than the negative. So what I'm going to do is rotate and do the second weld the other way around just to distribute the uh, the better welds and the not quite so good welds side to side. Okay, now we'll do the negative cell. Okay, so we have three pairs of welds on each one, and then we can just repeat that for the other one. One thing you do have to do is to sharpen the tips of the electrodes because they do literally wear down and uh, melt and leave a bit of the material behind. So they are they develop flat ends. So. Okay, so there we have two out of the three series connections done. Now flip the cell over and do the final series connection. Okay, so now we have all of our series connections made with the nickel strips. Now what we need to do is add the balance cable connections and the discharge connections. Now for the first and last cells you have both the, um, the discharge wires, the thicker discharge wires and the thinner balance wires. And obviously you don't want to be soldering these thick discharge wire joints uh, directly on top of the cells. That would defeat the point of using a spot welder at all. So what we're going to do is solder these thicker discharge wires onto the nickel tabs before we spot weld them onto the pack. Now I probably shouldn't have had a whole jug of coffee this morning, but we'll see how we get on. Okay, so there is one of our discharge wires 
soldered to a nickel strip tab. And these I will do four welds on, simply because they're most likely to have strain on them. Okay, so there's our negative discharge wire. We'll solder the balance wire onto the end there. Um, it can be a very quick, small solder joint, so I'm not too worried about heat damage to the cell just doing that. Yeah, that isn't as good as the other one, but it should be fine. Okay, the first and last wires in the balance connector connect to the discharge terminals on the top here. Each of the three middle wires connects in turn to the bridges between the cells. So wire number two connects to the connection between cells one and two. Wire number three connects to the connection between cells two and three. Wire number four connects to the connection between cells three and four. That will do. Doesn't need to be much. There we go. The coffee is really not helping me here. Uh, that wasn't even in frame, oh well. Anyway, at this point, you should have a functioning pack. Okay, we can now see that we have, in fact, wired up the balance connector correctly, because if we hadn't, uh, it wouldn't be reading individual cell voltages, it would be reading something bizarre and probably beeping an error at us. The final thing to do is the uh, XT60. Uh, as I said, I probably won't keep the uh, the hot glue down the middle of the cells. That was just there to hold them in place as I spot molded them. I've got some large heat shrink on order, which I'll put over the whole thing and which will hold the end gaps in place nicely without having to use zip ties in these slots, which I think just looks a bit ugly. Uh, yeah, I've got uh, 28 more of these. My plan at the moment is to build five packs like this, um, I can run them individually on my 6 and 7 inch quad, I can stack them and run them as a, a 4S2P on my macro quad build, and then that will leave me 12 cells left over to make a couple of 6S packs, rather big 6S packs, which I might try on my one and only 6S build, which is a 5 inch. 3000 milliamp power 6S lithium ion on a 5 inch quad, it could work. It's only double what I fly with it right now, so, well, what am I to find out? <laughs>